But now it's time for something a little different. It's time to sit back, time to listen in, and enjoy the casual conversation of a fireside chat. Joining us now is Osvaldo Sperano, CEO of Acuva. And with him is Alejandro Mondragon, Head of Retail Business Development for EMEA at Amazon Web Services. Uh, they're here to discuss how retailers can apply lean thinking to address some of their most pressing challenges, whether that's customer experience, supply chain, or any of the other big issues of the day. Over to you, Ozzy. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, okay, so um, first of all, uh, my name is Osvaldo Spadano. Don't get scared. You can call me Ozzy, much easier. <laughs> I'm the CEO of Akuva, but my background is very much in the, in technology. I'm, I'm, I, I used to be a CTO, uh, both on the vendor side, but also on the retail side. So I've seen uh, both sides of the coin. And, um, um, and Lean is something which is very close, um, something I'm passionate about. Um, I've started my own Lean journey uh, early 2000 when I was co-founder of a company called Venda um, for various reasons. And since then, I um, never looked back. Um, Alejandro, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, hi, Yossi. Uh, thank you very much. Very glad to be here. So uh, yes, just like Joe said, Alejandro Mondragon, responsible for business development for EMEA at AWS. I work very closely with the account teams in the region, helping our retail customers grow their business. So thanks for inviting me to this fireside chat. Excellent. Thank you so much, Alejandro, for being with us. Uh, very kind of you. Um, so uh, first of all, let's talk about uh, Lean. What is Lean? Um, we're not going to spend too much time on it. Um, simply, Lean, it means creating more value for customers with fewer resources. The term Lean was coined by a small group of researchers uh, uh, from the MIT. Uh, to describe the Toyota's business um, and more specifically the Toyota production system. Um, now you might ask why Amazon and more specifically Amazon Web Services in a first uh, chart up, um, about Lean. Um, well, um, Jeff Bezos uh, has from day one, as you all know, been relentlessly customer centric. And he has frequently cited the lean thinking by Jim Humack and Dan Jones as one of his favorite uh, business books. I've got a copy here. Just a disclaimer, uh, Dan Jones um, is also an investor and um, um, senior advisor of uh, my company, Akuva. Um, now, in his uh, famous annual shareholder um, letters, uh, Jeff Bezos have referred to, you know, a, a lean tools such as undone codes, Kaizen programs, and eliminating the root cause of problems. Um, and Amazon, in my opinion, along uh, with um, you know companies like Tesco in the UK, for example, were the first really to understand the profound significance of the Toyota parts distribution system, which was described in the book Lean Thinking, um, which changed retail forever. Um, if you remember, we all know Amazon clearly, um, uh, but uh, Tesco through, uh, during the transformation went from being a third um, uh, you know, a, a, a grocery um, um, in UK to be third in the world, a, a massive transformation. Now let's get straight into the question so we can add value to our audience in uh, Lean Talking. Um, so um, Alejandro, Lean, as we know, is about identifying no value added um, activities, which we refer to as waste, and eliminating them. Mm -hmm. What are the major sources of waste you see in retail? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks, Osi. So, um, I mean, I, I think of waste in, in two dimensions. So first, you have, of course, as you said, process waste. So it's all the activities and processes that retailers conduct every day that end up adding no real customer value. Also duplicated processes along their value chains. So for instance, manual inventory counting when the product comes into the store warehouse and then counting it again at the shop floor. So this is, this is waste in its, in its purest definition. So you can fix this by introducing technology and lean processes into the value chain. Another example is returns, for example, in e-commerce. 
And we see a lot of this taking place in retail, especially with the surge in e-commerce that brought uh, that was brought by the, by the pandemic. So if you're, for example, if your product information and your product images in your in your website does not reflect how the product looks in reality or what it does, then of course you will end up having returns and that is waste. Uh, and, so, and, and you could say that some of these returns are inevitable if you think about the product not uh, properly fitting uh, the, the shopper or not being um, uh, the, yeah, the, the, the right size, right? So, but even those kinds of returns can be actually minimized through technology. You can use machine learning algorithms uh, that uh, are based on, uh, on previous purchases, the profile of the shopper, uh, style, and then through that, you can reduce returns. So again, trying to reduce waste. And then the other uh, type of waste is just material waste that comes from also inefficiencies in your processes. So if you think about uh, ineffective or inefficient demand planning, if you think about uh, inefficient supply chain or inventory allocation to stores, that will end up in a lot of waste in the form of food waste in grocery. Or if we think about uh, apparel or non-food, well, that would be dead inventory or shrinkage, right? And that is addressable by lean thinking. So applying technology and lean processes to improving your demand planning and supply chain um, activities as a retailer. Yeah, that's, uh, you hit the nail on the head uh, with that, absolutely. Uh, thank you. Um, now, um, let's talk slightly about Amazon for a moment. Um, we know that Amazon's core vision since uh, the start in 1994 uh, was about obsessive uh, customer focus. Um, Jeff Bezos cited, um, by focusing obsessively on customers, we, internally, we are internally driven to improve our services, add benefits and features, invent new products, lower prices, and speed up shipping times before we have to. I think the key here is the last part of the sentence, before we have to. Can you please explain what it means? Yeah. So at Amazon and AWS, we start with the customer and work backwards. And, we, and in those seven words, we try to remind ourselves that everything has to be about building something that delights customers. But the process is not only about being close to them and asking them what they want. It's also about a deep understanding of their customer uh, situation, of their context, and through that understanding, being able to invent on their behalf. And this is also directly linked to our mission of being Earth's most customer-centric company. That means that we always have to be thinking about the next big thing, right? About what is the next friction that we're going to remove from the customer journey, the next friction that we're going to uh, remove from the, from the shopping experience uh, through uh, eliminating waste, through eliminating inefficiencies, making them leaner, the processes, to delight customers. So this is, this is I think, the, 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 the clue or, or, or the key. So proactively raising the bar when we're thinking about new products and services and never becoming complacent. And I think that's what it means uh, before we have to. But having said that, at AWS, we actually, we actually 90% of the things that we build for customers are based on what they tell us is relevant for them, is, is valuable, and it's, it matters to them. Only the other 10% is from things that they might not articulate themselves directly, but again, this understanding of, of their business and their pain points help us to invent on their behalf. Excellent. As you were talking, actually, they reminded me of the book following Lean Thinking that uh, Jim Womack and Dan Jones written, which was this one, Lean Solution. Now, what's interesting is the subtitle there, um, as you can see. Okay, 
So what you just explained there is it's, it's basically it's how to collaborate with customers to create value mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is get close to the customer, collaborate with them. And uh, the 90% of demand that you said comes with the conversation with them. Uh, and that's called to lean thinking. Um, because it's not just about processes and how quick you are in doing things, how efficient you are, but also it's about making sure you create the things that actually solve problems to customers. Mm. Um, and also the other interesting thing is about um, in, in lean thinking, uh, there is this framework of problem solving um, and they call it, you know, type one problem, type two, type three and type four. So they, are uh, they identify four types of problems and they go through the spectrum of uh, um, the kind of firefighting type of problems um, 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 down to the other side of the spectrum, which is innovation. Because innovation, in fact, is a, 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 a problem-solving activity as well. It's just of a deeper or, or a different nature. Um, and now, what's interesting is when you look at the type one and type two type of problems, so um, which is um, firefighting and root cause analysis. Um, uh, in that case, what you typically see is the customer, in one way or the other, is affected, and therefore, is the customer knocking knocking on your door asking for help or for that problem to be solved or whatever. Mm. When you enter to the other side of the half of the spectrum, which is type three and four, which is continuous improvement and innovation, um, is a different ballgame. Because at that time, the customer will not be knocking on your door. Mm. It's your organization that you have to raise the bar and then go from what you, you are, where you are, which is the current state, to where you want to be. Uh, which is the future state, and then trying to fill the gap through problem-solving activities uh, before the customer asks you or before the competition does it before you. So that's, again, great example of lean thinking applied. Um, this is why we're talking to AWS and Amazon. <laughs> Although not many people, I think, I think, think of, um, of Amazon as a lean company, but yeah, they are. Um, Next question. Um, Amazon has a clear set of principles. We know the uh, 14 uh, leadership principles uh, of Amazon um, that are consistently applied across the business to innovate. Mm. Um, many people talked about it. Books have been published about it. How can retailers learn from these, in your opinion? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think there are a few principles of how we work at Amazon and AWS that, that, that retailers can, can, uh, can actually apply uh, themselves to their business, and we actually work with retailers in helping them implement this type of approach uh, to innovation. I mean, the customer, the customer backward thinking, um, they also and how we invent new products and services, but also how we organize uh, for innovation. And and this, we have an approach that we share with retailers, and we actually accompany them um, for them to start implementing such way of working in their own business. So the approach basically is based on four key pillars. The, and, and you mentioned a little bit already uh, uh, some of these ideas. So the first one is retailers have to encourage employees to generate great ideas, but they have to encourage this also across the organization. But second, they have to deploy specific mechanisms that, um, that allow for these uh, for these ideas to become meaningful innovations. Third, they have to ensure that the organization actually supports innovation. And that is by decentralizing authority and empowering leaders and, and teams to be agile and to drive rapid execution. And fourth is about ensuring that technology architecture empowers innovators. And that means having self-service tools, self-service serv uh, self service, uh, yeah, tools, and technologies whenever possible, uh, and, and also using cloud to enable agility to build quickly and fail fast and scale fast. Yes, that's uh, music to my ears. <laughs> uh, absolutely, um, I totally agree with you on that. Um, actually, interesting. Um, you were talking about um, uh, um, encouraging ideas uh, from the workforce. And that reminds me of, um, of the Toyota's uh, suggestion system. 
so, you know, as you know, lean comes from Toyota. So Toyota is, is clearly the best example there of, of a lean company. Um, and um, now there is nothing new about a suggestion system. Many companies have it, right? Um, what's different uh, with Toyota is that um, with between 1950, 1951 and 2011, so within 60 years, um, th through the suggestion system, they generated a 40 million improvement ideas, 40 million. Um, that's a lot. Um, now, that in itself is quite very interesting. But the most interesting part, in my opinion, is not just the 40 million, is, is the second stats, which is 95% of the workforce has been involved. Mm. And 95% of those ideas were actually implemented. Um, and that's very powerful. Um, now, this is why um, very often uh, people look, uh, you know, uh, mention TPS and t typically TPS means Toyota production system, but often lean thinkers uh, uh, refer to it as a thinking people system. Um, uh, because lean is about creating a learning organization and you do that by involving uh, the, your workforce. Um, so to the next question, this is something you, you, you touched on uh, before uh, about leadership. Uh, what role do executives and leadership plays in creating and establishing a lean culture within the company? Yeah. Yeah, thanks, thanks Osvaldo. Uh, interesting question. So I, I mean, I think CEOs and company leaders, of course, are responsible for setting the company direction top down, setting the priorities and the focus for the business. A set of principles, I think, that express these strategic, uh, uh, these strategic aims in a simpler way, also to galvanize employees around a common purpose. And culture will be based on those principles that the leadership has established. I mean, le leadership is then uh, responsible for creating lean cultures by creating lean thinking principles. And, and we already talked a little bit about it, principles like agility, uh, resourcefulness, scrappiness, um, customer first, of course. But what is very important is also to design the organization and the mechanisms that will enable for the implementation of these, of these ideas, right? Uh, and of these principles. So I think that's where you were uh, talking about uh, the example of Toyota. And I think one good example of lean organization is Amazon to pizza teams. Two pizza teams, probably you've heard about it, is it means that the team should not be bigger than a team that can be fed with two pizzas. And the whole idea is to have uh, teams that can run fast, that have a single, uh, a single threaded leader, that are the, the, the need for a lot of communication, a lot of um, useless meetings is minimized, and also that it brings agility to the team. So the, 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 the team has all the resources within, within it um, and a tight mission and a tight, uh, and a tight charter so that they can work focus on that and delivering. And I think that's pretty close to what Lean promotes, right? Bang on, absolutely. Um, this is actually a great example of, of the keen uh, lean concept. Um, when you look at lean, there are lots of angles you can look at. Um, mm -hmm. and, and one of those uh, key things is about, as we know, removing waste. But why do we remove waste? It's not just for the sake of it. We remove waste to accelerate the speed of flow. So what you described is a system that allows a speed of flow. Flow is everything in lean thinking. It's every, mm -hmm. absolutely everything because this is what creates and um, um, if you think about what creates a value from the moment a customer interacts with your business, right, is the customer touches the organization with a request, with a demand, or with a, you know, asking for a problem to be solved, whatever it is. And that demand has to travel through the organization as fast, as efficiently as possible. So mm -hmm. that the answer can go back to the customer or the problem can be solved uh, on behalf of the customer first time without going back and forth too many times. Therefore, their flow is extremely important. 
Furthermore, and I think this is even more important, you touched that, uh, upon that before, is if you can move from, as a business, from thinking about economy of, um, 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 of scale okay. mm -hmm. to economy of flow, you, you mm -hmm. focus on the flow, and you enable a, a, an efficient horizontal flow, which then also makes it easier to scale a company. You probably know a few things about scaling up um, a company there at Amazon. Um, so to the next question then, um, focus on retailing. Um, retail, as we know, uh, they've been historically a, a low margin business um, and Amazon knows that very well. Um, can you tell us how AWS helps retailers um, to be efficient and improve margins? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yes, historically, retail has been a, 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 a low margin business. If you think that on average, omni channel retailers will have uh, lower single digit uh, margins. But, but, but we are convinced that retailers can improve profitability significantly through the use of technology. And just, just to, to, to mention why we think this. So recent, recent, uh, um, a recent study from McKinsey on store operations indicates that by using technology in several areas of the, of the business, for example, in improving in-store in -store business processes, like automating warehouse to shelf, introducing IoT devices, cameras, electronic shelf labels, but also automating a lot of the back office uh, systems like store management and business intelligence systems, retailers can significantly improve profitability by four to eight percent points. So that's that's a lot. If you think that a lower single digit can be can be brought to almost double digit, if retailers can leverage technology technology to do this, McKinsey is also providing a little bit uh, additional insights into, for example, uh, other areas where technology can be used. Data, uh, data is one. So, just indicating if uh, if you do a more data business, data driven demand planning and assortment optimization, for example, you can have revenue uplifts of between one to five percent, and you can improve inventory inventory costs and shrinkage from between 10 to 30%. That's also quite significant. So we at AWS are working with retailers uh, all over the world in helping them leverage these technologies, work backwards from their customers, see where is the business challenge, and then help them identify the best fitting solutions to solve those challenges. So of course, retailers are unique and their challenges are unique, but Areas where we are working very, very frequently with them are improving omnichannel experiences, automating store operations, improving supply chain, uh, optimizing supply chains, and helping them modernize their data platforms so that they are uh, faster to market. Yes, excellent. Um yeah, I think data is extremely important um, in lean thinking as well because it's it's. Uh, I mean, lean thinking is about applying uh, the scientific method. Mm -hmm. It's about um, they call it PDCA, plan, do, act, uh, check, um, and, and data are important. Um, opinions really are not important. You have to back that up, uh, back that up with data. And data yeah. very often in lean is used as a way to identify the right problems to solve. Um, that, that that and, and that's important. Um, now, um, a bit a bit tricky here, but can, can you tell me? I mean, by, by the sound of it, all this lean thinking, which you don't call lean within AWS and within Amazon, um, you have different terminology, but it doesn't matter. The the, the principles are are the same, and those are clearly a very big competitive advantage. Okay. Why is the Amazon uh, risks to giving away their secret sauce? Uh, like, for instance, the approach to innovation, as you said before. Uh, and does this apply also to other technologies that you're developing and um, technology solutions that are shared with, um, I've seen with retail customers, such, for example, the, uh, what do you call it, the, the just walk out technology that you're giving to other retailers as well? Yeah. 
Yeah, I, that's also a, a very good uh, question, Nosi. Thanks. Um, I mean, I think it goes back to this, again, to that mission of being uh, uh, customer obsessed and, 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 and Earth's most customer centric company. So we, we're sharing with our customers the things that have worked well at Amazon and AWS. And yes, one is, uh, is this uh, uh, working backwards from the customer need approach, but also, as you mentioned, other technologies. And that ranges from, for example, our automated contact center uh, platform, Amazon Connect. The, the technology uh, um, powering the Amazon Go stores just work out technology, just as you mentioned, but it's also the Alexa voice enablement technologies. And it's also all the artificial intelligence and machine learning solutions and, and, and technologies that actually enable and drive the business of Amazon.com, uh, such as Amazon Personalize, Amazon Forecast, Amazon Fraud Detector, just, just to mention a few. I mean, we, we say AWS was born from retail and is built for retailers. And that means that all the technology and all the learnings that, that Amazon.com has learned through its existence, uh, we are now making them available uh, for, for our retail customers and they're benefiting of all that learning and all that investment. So just let me, let me illustrate this uh, with, with, with one example and it's this Amazon Connect, the, the contact center technology. So we develop it to, to power the service centers of, uh, of, of Amazon across the world. 70,000 agents use that every day. And when we, when we started using it, Customers told us, if you were to make that technology available to the market one day, we would be interested. So with it, of course, it took us some years to make it as good as it is today and to make it uh, uh, the high standards for making available for our customers, but it's now available. And that's the same with just workout technology. It also took us some years to make it ready for customers. But I think that sharing with retailers keeps us customer obsessed and helps and helps our retailers also be customer obsessed themselves. It's good. Uh, good news for customers, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that, that, that really shows the importance of long term thinking uh, clearly, but also the complexity. Uh, of bringing new uh, reliable functioning solutions to the market. I mean, you mentioned about some of these products you've been working for eight years, 10 years, 15 years. It doesn't happen o o overnight. Um, and also the importance of DNA of the company because it's not just about being a technology provider. It's about being a technology provider, yes, but uh, most importantly, a partner who understands your, 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 your industry and also specifically your business and problems. Mm. Uh, so it's very important. Now, getting to the nitty gritty, um, how do you, um, you know, how, how do you help retailers to automate and, and mm. to be more efficient? Yeah. So, I mean, for, for, for AWS, uh, uh, automation is a vehicle to deliver better services at scale. And that's how we also view that, that the, the topic of automation for our retail customers. So we help them in the process of, it's, it's a step process. We first, we first um, the first step is identify and get real understanding of what is the problem you want to solve. So that, that is key. If you don't know what is the problem you want to solve, it would be impossible first to find a solution and then to scale it through automation, right? So the second step is identify what is the data needed to, to prototype and to experiment on solution paths. Also understand where the data will be coming from and how you will integrate it. Third is putting that data in a platform that will allow for applying artificial intelligence and machine learning. So you can optimize the solution, make sure that the impact is really differentiated and that um, and that it has predictive capabilities. And then the last step is automating the process. So once you have gone through those steps, then you can actually automate to scale. That oh, makes sense. Very good points. First, understand the problem and automation is the last step of the process. Makes lots of sense. Very often people start with automation straight away. <laughs> Big mistake. Um, absolutely. Um, 
when you talk to these retailers, how, how do you recognize a, a, a lean retailer from a known lean retailer, someone who is at least trying to be one, uh, you know, from those who are not even attempting? Um, and why, and uh, why is it there aren't um, more retailers adopting lean out there? Yeah. So I, I would say that actually in one way or another, retailers have always been trying to implement some kind of lean thinking, uh, Osvaldo, in one way or another, especially when we think about retail being a, a low margin business. Of course, today with the, with the pandemic, I think that has accelerated the need and the urgency to start thinking more seriously about these approaches. But I mean, how do you recognize a lean retailer? You, you see a lean retailer when you see a retailer that is constantly raising the bar on how uh, they deliver value to their customers, how they improve the value proposition, how they take out, again, these inefficiencies, these frictions from the shopping experience. And, and, and I think of, of, of a few uh, uh, already from top of my head. I mean, if you think about Salando, Ocado, Picnic, Otto in Europe, but also Mercado Libre in Latin America, for example. But it's not only the digital native uh, and pure online pure player retailers. I mean, you also have the Sainsbury's, the Adidas, the, the Burberry's, the Dunham's, the Ikea's. I mean, these retailers that have acted agile and lean to really adapt their business and to pivot in, in, many, in many cases through the pandemic and come out successful. And you will see another way of also recognizing lean retailers is when you look at their financial performance. That is normally correlated, uh, of course, in a better, better financial performance and, and above average, that is very, very often correlated to being a, a lean, efficient, customer-oriented retailer. I, you're, you're mute, as well. Yes, sorry, I'll I, I jump uh, um, to the last question. Um, there isn't much time left. Um, many people, you know, again, when we talk about innovation, it, it's, it's it's such a you know, big world and it can mean so many different things. Uh, and very often people think of innovation as a product innovation, but then there, there is more than that. There is uh, in, uh, operation innovation, there is service innovation, uh, there is business model innovations, and there are examples of those out there. Um, but how much management and leadership innovation do you see in retail? Yeah, and, and that's also a, a really good question, Osvaldo. I, I see a lot about it. Just, uh, just, just imagine if, if, uh, if retail could have gone through these last 18 months of, uh, of pandemic uh, successfully, if, if there was not a leadership in, in many or in, 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 in most of these retailers challenging the, the current or the business as usual approaches, right? Uh, I mean, and, and let me just expand a little bit on that. Um, it's not only the pandemic, retailers were already transforming retail uh, in the last decade. Right? Look at what Ocado has done for grocery or Salando for fashion. And then also think these retailers are building platforms and marketplaces that are to be used by other retailers. That requires a big change of paradigm, right? Establishing partnerships that probably were, we could not think about just a few years ago. So I think that has required a lot of, a lot of innovative thinking a lot of, and a lot of implementing of new cultures, mechanisms, organization, and technology architectures at retailers to be able to do this. So yeah, I, I, I think uh, you see a lot of innovation there as well. Fair enough. Okay, thank you very much, Alejandro, for your for your help and for articulating these thoughts very, very well and for sharing a lot about AWS and Amazon. Yes, uh, thank you. It was a pleasure, Ossi. Cheers. Honestly, it was lovely just to uh, sit and listen to the conversation uh, flow there. So it's been uh, enlightening for, for, for myself and I'm, as I'm sure it's been for everybody uh, tuning in. So thank you very much to both of you. Thanks Cheers, thanks a lot. It was a pleasure. Thanks.